And welcome, everyone. We're in the Dome Experience here at the Football Wing with Athletic Director John Wildhack, following up on the news of the extension of the contract of football coach Dino Babers. And, John, this is a milestone for you and your tenure here, and uh, congratulations. I know Coach Babers is happy having uh, traded text with him uh, briefly this morning, and, and uh, this is a, a notable occurrence here in the football program. Now, thanks, Matt. And it's, uh, it's a great day for the football program. It's a great day for our university, for our community. For our fan base, not only in central New York, but literally around the country, around the world. So, and it's the, it's the next step in the continued development mm -hmm. and growth of this program. Among the reasons that it certainly impacts the community is people have had a lot of fun this fall, right? right? And so there's an effort towards sustaining that, right? And if some is good, more is better. Is that kind of what got the ball rolling here? Maybe you can take us through the timeline of when this became. Uh, an agenda item for you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it really, we, we actually did our, started our homework back in, in, in late August, mm -hmm. anticipating that, you know, we might have a terrific year. I'm not sure we anticipate, anticipated nine and three, sure. but that we'd have a breakthrough year. We did, so I wanted to be prepared. And then in early November, I had discussions with uh, the chancellor, um, with the board chair and other members of the board. They were very, very supportive. And after that, engaged with, uh, with Dino. I said, here's what we want to do. He was very enthusiastic about that and then uh, worked with his agent uh, to get it done. Okay. I know uh, given the private university and the, the way things are, are dealt with here, you're not going to tell us years and, and numbers and that type of thing. When you did that homework, what did you set out to find out and with whom or, or what level of competitiveness are you seeking here? What, what did you try to do in terms of what you thought would stabilize the situation? If, at first, you, re, you really look within the conference, right, mm -hmm. within the ACC. That's who we compete against week mm -hmm. in and week out. So you start there and then you look at other Power Five conferences as well. And you know, after that, you, you, you accumulate that data as much as you can, and then you determine, all right, what's, what are the appropriate uh, steps for us to take? And I know one of the steps early for you is you need to have uh, approval of the board. So you take that idea to them. What type of feedback you get there? The feedback was very supportive, and I'm very thankful to, uh, to Chancellor Severud for his support, Steve Barnes, our board chair, Kathy Walters, our incoming board chair-elect, and Jimmy Kuhn, who's chair of the athletic mm -hmm. committee. They were very, very supportive and said, you know what, let's go for it. Let's try to get it done. John, you're not retaining the football coach solely because he's winning games. Or maybe you are. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But my understanding would be that Coach ba there's something about Coach Babers here that makes you want him to represent the program for the long term. What are those things? Exactly, Matt. He represents our program, our university, our community extraordinarily well. Um, and that's that's you know that's that's impactful to me. I think it's impactful to uh, to so many of us. And so it's you know it's beyond the football skill and the football acumen. Is you know when Coach Babers is is in the public eye, he represents our university and our community in a first class manner. One of the keys to the success of the program here recently has been this commitment to build out not only facilities but the staff as well. The staff here is bigger than it's ever been. That pays dividends in recruiting in a lot of other ways, seen and unseen. Once you get bigger this way, those people want stability too. That's a lot of other families and things that are connected. What, what's been done to shore up that aspect of the program? Well, that's, that's part of the overall analysis of the program mm -hmm. and part of, you know, from day one when I got here is, all right, Let's figure out the resources that we need to compete at an ACC level. Let's figure out how we invest appropriately, and that's, that's exactly what we've done. And yesterday is just another step in that, uh, in that process. So many of those people we're talking about uh, deal in recruiting. That's sure. certainly the lifeblood of college football. Big recruiting day coming up uh, next week with the early signing period. And that had to have been a driving force here, right, to, to have some degree of stability because the coaches are out in living rooms right now. Absolutely. And I think for our 2019 recruits, the kids mm -hmm. that we're recruiting now, 2020, 2021 and beyond, they know if they come to Syracuse University, they're going to play for Coach Babers. They're going to get a great education. So to have it done and to have it announced before the early signing day, uh, which begins December 19th, was very important to us. So there's a great idea of momentum here, bowl game coming up. Uh, what are you looking to accomplish here in the messaging of this and in the, the foreseeable future? Let's go uh, inclusive of the bowl game, which is uh, two weeks away. This is a really important time for the program. Well, I think it's, it's, it represents a partnership, right, mm -hmm. and a commitment from the university to Coach Babers and the program. 
and a commitment and a partnership from Coach Babers back to the university. And now we can, we can use the build upon that and build upon the success that we've experienced in 2018. And we have a tremendous opportunity in the Camping World Bowl December 28th. And if we can be fortunate enough to win, this would be the only seventh time yeah. in, uh, in school history we've won 10, 10 games. Then you head into an off season where among the biggest things going on here are the improvements at the Carrier Dome. If I'm the football coach and I'm sitting opposite you talking about a, a contract extension, I want to know that the place I'm going to play is going to continue to be vibrant and, and uh, competitive. What, what, what type of assurances were given to uh, Coach Babers in that area? Well, I think, again, back in May, the board approved you know, $118 million investment in the, in the Dome. So. That was really impactful to coach, it was impactful to all of us. Okay, you know what, that show of faith, that commitment by the board, that the Dome, which is already the most unique facility in Power 5 football, that it's only going to be better, um, that's a catalyst. Okay, well you got your hands uh, full here still. <laughs> one thing off the desk uh, for the time being, uh, we'll hear from Coach, I assume, here at some point. I know he's uh, been out on the road right now right. and it uh, seems from what uh, we, we've seen so far that it's been a very successful run there. We'll find out more on Wednesday. Yeah, it has. And the whole staff's out there recruiting mm -hmm. all week and then we have a big recruiting weekend again here with, uh, with the visits. So it's, um, it's, it's a busy time for the staff, exciting time for the staff, exciting for our fans and uh, Again, I think uh, I'm very optimistic and excited about our future. All right, John, I uh, appreciate the time. A good milestone here passed, and uh, maybe more to come for you, okay? Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Could be that 10th win at the uh, Camping World Bowl, which uh, would be historic, and then propel the Orange uh, off into an exciting off season as well. You could be part of it. Certainly, uh, season tickets next year, I'm sure, are becoming even more appealing as we continue as well. Tickets for the bowl game are at cuse.com slash campingworld.